today let's talk about this painting the old guitarist by pablo picasso i think you would have heard about picasso somewhere maybe even seen this picture maybe studied him under feminist studies who knows but we would talk generally about him today so picasso is regarded as one of the foremost eminent artists of 20th century he was a spanish guy who did loads of stuff he was a painter sculptor printmaker ceramist stage designer, poet, and a playwright. He spent most of his life in France creating art, so I think it would be suffice to say that he made all kinds of artsy stuff. So let's talk art movements real quick. Picasso is uh, primarily associated with pioneering the movement of Cubism. He also made major contributions to the movements of Surrealism, Symbolism, Post-Impressionism and a range of other classical styles that persisted during the uh, 1920s. According to some records, it is estimated that Picasso created an overwhelming total of over 50,000 pieces of art and I don't know about you, it's pretty impressive to me. So let's just talk about this one painting today, The Old Guitarist. It was painted in 1903 and it belonged to something known as the Blue Period of Picasso. It was during this time he was sympathetic to the plight of the downtrodden poor and painted many canvases depicting the miseries of less fortunate, the ill and the cast outs of the society. He too knew what it was like to be impoverished since he had been nearly penniless during all of 1902. This work was created in Madrid and the distorted style and weirdly dimensioned figure of the subject of the painting, some critics remark is reminiscent of the works of a Greek painter during Spanish Renaissance, El Greco. If you have to use one analogy to explain El Greco's work, it would be a distorted candle. But nevertheless, today this painting is kept in the Art Institute of Chicago. So. Another fun fact, the x-ray when done of this painting, of, of the canvas which is known to be the desktop of the dining table of Picasso's house or whatever, it was found that there were three sketches underneath the painting which shows that he was pretty much penniless. So the, uh, this painting belongs to the art movement Expressionism that dated from 1905 to 1920 and it was essentially a modernist movement that originated in Germany where artists sought to express emotional experience rather than what the eye perceives physically. It tries to capture the raw vulnerable feelings, a deeply subjective aspect of human experience and uh, in the words of Picasso, art is a lie that makes us realize the truth. Picasso's art, we can understand that it expresses an extreme effort of trying to stamp his personality on life and art, which made him all the more eccentric and it would be more easy for us, kind of it would aid us to understand this painting better in that way. So it would be important to talk about the history behind the blue period. This blue period, uh, is a style of Picasso that coincided with a period of restlessness in his young life, a time when he seemed almost as ruthless as his guitarist. He created his first blue pictures during the course of his second and most extensive Paris stay, a visit that lasted from the late spring of 1901 until following January. And yes, that is the Eiffel Tower, I'm sorry. He had gradually become preoccupied with something even more important at that time, which I would say is the major historic event behind this painting at least, or maybe like a couple of the paintings of his blue period, which was the suicide of his friend Carlos Casegumas, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and it occurred the previous February. So. Picasso had been far away when he killed himself, so he did not even attend the funeral and the following autumn he painted a series of canvases portraying the friend's death and burial and also this brought 
again brought up the feelings when Picasso's younger sister had died in 1895 and we can think maybe he was uh, blaming himself for the death of his friend and uh, maybe he never succeeded in getting over them and that was seen throughout the blue period. So gradually he developed his full-blown blue style. He abandoned the warmer colors of his palette and concentrated mostly on the shades of blue and little touches of red or yellow green. So let's get to this painting finally, the old guitarist. There is this pitiable male figure here and uh, during this time he was painting these half-naked beggars nearly always depicted as blind or psychotic. They appear to be more dramatic masculine counterparts to the female outcasts that he created before them and these have these had elongated angular physiques and slender tapering fingers and this physical type characterizes his style throughout the closing phase of his blue period. Uh, let's talk about the nerdy stuff. This painting is an oil on panel type. Yeah. And, and the dimensions are 122.9 into 82.6 cm and in this painting, blue tones and hues are used to represent, if you did not notice, the gloomy nature of the guitarist. And it depicts the viewer to think of the subject as either the guitarist or the guitar. And let's talk about the guitarist, <laughs> the main person there. So he's a symbol of human misery and he conveys melancholy or detachment. He's also blind, which adds to his tragedy. The guitar held by the blind man was the only element that had color variation. The warm brown color that is used to paint the guitar with symbolically represents the only tool that the man could use to redeem himself or get himself out of his poor state. He uses a uh, brown for guitar instead of the blue to represent the old man's only hope for survival. As such, Picasso painted the man as though leaning on the guitar with the hope that the music he produced would give him some reprieve from his terrible situation. So what are the implications of this painting in the present day? Let's raise the question of mental health. One can only wonder what is adding to the pain of this man. There are so many stories that arise. Is it his old age that gets him to lament over his life? Is it his thin, sleek body that shows malnutrition in times of poverty? Is it his torn clothes and his inability to gather pennies for an item of daily need? Is it his eyes, his blindness separating him from the world and causing desolation that, despite not being able to see, he can see all the evils in the society? Is it the disengagement from his own self and active engagement with the external world? The sadness lies in the existence of all these aspects in the picture and who knows, maybe you can find more. And it doesn't just cause pain to the, to the guitarist or the painter, but also to the viewer. Since the man sits in such an uncomfortable position that the viewer wants to look away but cannot because they can see their own miseries in it. Picasso has squeezed him into a pictorial frame that seems too small to hold him. Should the guitarist ever unfold his legs or raise his head, he would burst the pictorial bounds that encase him. But like an obedient shack in the box, he remains forever locked into the container which his creator fitted him in and conveys a sensation of compressed energy. And one can only imagine hearing a blues song being played by him that tells us about his story. For the painting to actually move but nevertheless, Picasso does that for us.